serious post-game edition of Mavs Live presented by Frontier. Hi there, Dana Larson, along with Brian Damaris and that P.J. Washington Jr. Pose in P.J. is going to be the lasting memory for me, Brian, after this game. I cannot imagine being more entertained by a playoff basketball game or impressed, really, with the Mavericks' effort. We had heroes. We had villains. We had redemption. We had comeback stories. And we had a massively important Game 3 win for Dallas. You want playoff basketball. <laughs> you want battles. You want a soap opera. You want all of those things. That's what you got. You saw grit, resolve, determination, force, playing with physicality, not backing down from anybody, taking care of your business, reestablishing what you want to do inside. This was a fantastic game, one of the most important games they've had in the last two years in this building. And all of those pieces put together get, got them this big win. The Mavericks wanted to defend home court. They wanted to put on a show in their first playoff home game in two years. They wanted to use the crowd, fuel themselves to a victory. And that's exactly what they did. Meanwhile, the Clippers lost all composure. Ty Lu talked before the game about uh, wanting to lean in. Long time. Yeah. He's not having to buy dinner, and I don't think Russell Westbrook should go out and try to get coffee tomorrow while he's here on the off day between. He is now public enemy number one in this city because earlier he's the one that ended up sort of forcing Luka out of the game with a leg injury. Point, the point is that the Mavericks didn't respond in kind. They, they, they kept their composure because of the physicality they played with. They were the aggressors. They weren't responding and playing victim. They were setting the tone of how they wanted to play from the start. And it all started, Dana, with reestablishing the lob, the lob threat, the inside threat, all of that which was just gone in the first two games from this series. Gafford and Lively, Jones got into the act, PJ got into the act, Josh Green got into the act. That was really demoralizing for the Clippers, and the team, this team was able to play with force on both ends of the floor. Defensively, which we'll talk about with the active hands, the blocks and the steals, the points off turnovers, and then offensively, just able to get what they wanted inside. That was opening up things for them all, all, out on the outside. The, frankly, not only was this not a Mavericks team that would win games like this in the past when they shoot 27% from three, they weren't doing that earlier this year. This is a brand new team and a team that's to be reckoned with. Yeah, there's a, there's an edginess now. There's a toughness, but the right kind, as we saw in this game tonight, uh, not going to be, uh, you know, a bull leader and not backing down all the things you were just mentioning. And I feel like the, the redemption story is so great for Daniel Gafford, who struggled in the first two games, foul trouble, injuries, and here coming home, wanting to, to get his feet under him and prove that he is so valuable like he was at the end of the regular season. It was from jump yes. that Daniel Gafford was a big part of this. You could tell they were intentionally wanting to get him involved, get him confident, get him going. And he also was putting in the work big time in this game. Yeah, remember, Zubats was such a force in game one, and Gafford really got into foul trouble. But you see the lobs early and often. You knew that he and Lively, they wanted to get them involved early, get that vertical game going, and suck in that defense with the driving, as you see right there, bring Zubats closer to him. And then when they do that, boom, right over the top of your centers. The centers combined uh, for 21 points and five blocks in this game. Gafford himself had three blocks and two steals. Uh, Lively had another two blocks. Listen, we talked about the way they were able to play small and play effectively small down the stretch in game two and get that win that way. But that's an off-speed pitch. That's not the bread and butter. The centers had to be effective on both ends of the floor because that's the identity of this team since the All-Star break and since March 6th, the last 21 games, the last quarter of the season, this was the number one defense in the league, and they just held the fourth best offense to 90 points and under 100 points for the second straight game. And they stuck to it. They didn't abandon the things that they had done well but didn't go right in the first game of this series and that's what I love about it is not uh, turning your back on your DNA at this point and in the center that you traded for that you were so happy to have be a part of the mix and you can see why and you can see the things that they were able to do we saw it all on display in the second quarter uh, as they truly put this game out of reach the Mavericks actually trailed at one point uh, but ran away with it with such a strong quarter
Finally, one of those 30 point quarters that we have not seen in this series where the offense was flowing. They were getting those high percentage shots and it was opening everything else up, but they were getting defense too on the other end. Yeah, defense turned to offense. Remember, they didn't, they were 0 of 8 from the three point line in the first quarter and finally were able to get four threes in this second quarter. They were running with pace. That was one of my keys to the game. They were establishing the lob. That was one of my keys to the game. And then they were able to play some strong defense. You saw Gafford get a block. There's another block there. And then the lobs were coming fast and furious. And yes, you're right. That's what separated this game. This was a very close, close game after one. And then it got a, it, it basically expanded there in the second quarter and never really got any closer. And it, it felt like, too, they were, you know, we offensively establishing those things inside, but never getting away from that defensive intensity that has worked so well uh, once they got it back going in game two. And they were just so active, which had to have frustrated the Clippers. 19 turnovers for this Clipper team. And you saw number of guys with high turnover games. Kawhi Leonard with four. James Harden with five. Russell Westbrook and a few. Norman Powell, three turnovers, and, and the Mavericks were swiping and stealing and just making things uncomfortable and difficult, and that really fueled everything the other way. Dana, they had 29 points off turnovers in a game where they only scored 101 points. That's a third of their points, 22 fast break points to go with 52 points in the paint. They were dominating in pace, they were dominating inside, and there's deflections, it's active hands, getting hands in the, act, in the, in the passing lanes. And, and just making life difficult and not letting that offense. Remember, Ty Lue wanted to come in here and say, fix the offense, let's get into a flow, let's penetrate the lane, open things up for the three. They had the blueprint. Well, here, you saw how well they were able to, to do, the, the Mavericks were able to stop that blueprint from being executed because of what they were able to do with four future Hall of Famers, guys that know how to get their own shot. This is the best defense I've seen in 13 years from the Mavericks. We saw two years ago, good defense of Western Conference Finals run, but let's be honest, that was a lot of smoke and mirrors, trying to scramble and make things work with an imperfect team. This is a team that defensively can make things happen and make a run. When you add what they can do offensively, they become really dangerous. Much more coming up. Just getting started here on the post-game edition. Set, you know, early on the game with his uh, aggressiveness around the basket. Yeah, I thought he was great. Um, you know, uh, bounce back, uh, you know, from... You know, being able to offensive rebound, uh, finish, um, and then defensively at the rim, I thought it was really good for us. Uh, um, protected the paint. Um, we, you know, just understanding um, he, he played a really good game and he helped our defense at a high level. I know you guys didn't have a lot of lob dunks the first two games. Just talk about the impact of the lob dunks tonight. Yeah, I thought uh, in that first half we had 10, I think. And uh, in the first two games, that's probably you know, the total that we had. So just understand what they were taking away. Um, I, thought, I told Kai he probably had a career high at lobs. Um, he was really in tune with, uh, with D-Live and, and Gaff. And uh, just, you know, being able to get to the paint and, and the late pass, the lob was, was big for us and our bigs finished uh, this evening. Um, but just being able to get the ball in the paint, we didn't turn it over. Um, they got great hands, and anytime you drive the ball, they're swinging at it. And I thought for us to only have eight turnovers was big. You said they weren't giving you the lobs, but so in essence, how did you take them back? I know some of them were in tra transition. Yeah, I think when you, when you look at just being able to get the ball in the paint and uh, Kai's ability to score in the paint, and so you have to you know pick your poison if you're going to let him get going, um, he will will take it, and then. For him to be able to read that if they step up, uh, he's, he's able to dump it off. And I thought um, being the quarterback between him and Luca tonight was uh, at a high level with the lob and being able to get others involved. And then, you know, P.J. had 10 points and five rebounds. I don't really think that was that really measures his game. How would you kind of describe the presence that he brought tonight? Yeah, I think when you look at P.J., he's been consistent on the defensive end. Um, and then being able to get out on, on the break.